Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com. These are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. And I'm a cardiac lecture number 28, acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction, to pave the way to an MI. And here we are, myocardial infarction. Now, an interesting thing when we're talking about myocardial infarction is I'm covering this sticky note that is found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, or Google, Etsy, Twitter, and NursingCamp.com. And when we're talking about myocardial infarction, it all depends on the question. Now, the question, if they're diagnosed with an MI, so diagnosed MI, you have to understand that this MI means that there's an infarction that already happened. So in the ventricle, there's already damage, okay? So that's, a, that's an important concept, especially for testing. Are they diagnosed or not? If they are suspected of an MI, that requires assessment. So when I'm talking about, that could be unstable angina. So we're always looking at patients that might become a myocardial infarctions. That's to pave the way. And those are all reasons that could result in myocardial infarction. Please see that lecture. So when I'm looking at, uh, am I, what do you do? So we talked about that with unstable angina because Prince metal, stable angina can all become unstable to myocardial infarction. So the big key to that is a patient that is presenting with diaphoresis, um, vomiting, sweating, angina pain, pallor, shortness of breath, and ECG changes. Um, these symptoms are symptomatic. That means there's decreased perfusion. Decreased perfusion is acute because ischemia is pain. And how do we see ischemia? Well, ST changes. So first what we see is ST depressions. So that means that there's ischemia going on. The oxygen isn't getting to the cells in the, in the ventricle or the, in the heart and because of a blockage or something like that. ST elevation, called a STEMI, that happens after. They already got an MI. There's actually a process that they'll go through. They'll start with this and then they will go to this. But I'll cover that in another lecture, with my ECG MI lecture. All right, so, so what do you do? You know, a patient comes in, uh, well, the first question is, is that are they diagnosed or are they not? Because if they're diagnosed, then I need to uh, monitor for chest pain. So somebody who's diagnosed with an MI, do they have chest pain or not? Okay. So the first thing is, is that um, figure out that. If they're suspected, we're gonna run through our normal owner MB. Okay, we'll put them in a high phallus, just like with unstable angina. Um, we're gonna give them oxygen, two to three liters, uh, nasal cannula. We're gonna give them nitro. So if there's chest pain and the patient is symptomatic, diaphoretic, all these types of things, we'll make sure that they're on a monitor too, an ECG, a telemetry monitor. We'll monitor and lead to, and what are we monitoring for? ST depressions and ST elevations or other dysrhythmias like VTAC or, you know, uh, flutter or fib or something. Um, we'll also get an EKG of this patient, okay? But this all kind of happens simultaneously. So we give nitro, uh, and then in five minutes, we're going to give it again. If there's still chest pain. If there's still chest pain, then we give another nitro, sublingual. If there's uh, chest pain goes away, well, we're still going to start the process. We're going to give them aspirin four. We might give them morphine, not always, uh, and beta blockers, not always. Okay, This is all follow your cup policy, but just anticipate that these things might happen. But if they still have chest pain, as they would with an MI, because that's the main indicator. If they're having chest pain, there's a problem. They're having um, an acute infarction, which means that that tissue is not being perfused. And a lot of times people with an MI are denying that they're having an MI. Um, so we're going to give some more nitro, and then after five minutes, we'll give another nitro. If you gave three nitros at five minutes apart, you're 15 minutes in, you got about three hours to do something. 
That means they need to go to a PCI. You'll probably notify that team where they're going to go in and look at the cabbage and they're going to look at those vessels. Um, but let's talk about what the patient might be feeling like. Well, we already know that they're, they're going to be symptomatic, diaphoretic, anxious, nauseous, dyspnea, ECG changes. With stable angina, they don't generally have that. With um, Prince Metal, they don't generally have diaphoresis and ECG changes. They just generally have um, chest pain. So that's a big indicator. And you need an ECG in order to identify, you know, these ECG changes. So putting them on a monitor. So a lot of times, so stable angina patients and uh, variant angina and even unstable who just present with chest pain, a lot of times they don't think they have an MI. They're having an MI. They deny it. Um, a lot of times they call it <clears throat> like an elephant on their chest. So real chest pressure, squeezing pain, tightness, uh, radiating too. It tends to radiate um, to the uh, the jaw and to the um, I'm doing math here, the the left arm, right? And when you're looking at it, you know it can be also substernal pain. Um, it could also be referred pain in the shoulder. So take chest pain uh, very serious, especially if they have an MI <laughs> or if you're suspecting an MI. Uh, you'll assess the pain, PQRST, you know, PQRST, you know, uh, pain quality and so on. Um, you're going to look for standing orders. And these standing orders are, this is kind of the protocol. That's an interesting point because in the NCLEX, if you have an option to give medications, um, you have the order. Always remember that. Um, so you always have the order. You always have them on a monitor, lead to. So in an MI, the big key is this time. It's time is muscle. And the quicker that we can start to perfuse the heart and we can start to perfuse this tissue, um, there's no damage. And so they'll go for a PCI and we're gonna try to treat these cardiac vessels. Um, they might st be started on a nitro drip, trital. Or even depending on the condition of the vessels, you know, a G2 inhib inhibitor, like Integralin. Right? So Integralin is stops clots from forming. And with a tissue that's damaged, we don't want clots because healing happens, you know, um, from the inside out. So you kind of want to you know, let the body heal itself naturally. So it doesn't really, if it, because if you start to have clots and stuff like that, the, the heart will have more of a difficulty uh, uh, maintaining itself and to, you have further damage to the heart. Um, and what's the risk? All right, so the risk of an MI, whenever you have a patient admitted with an MI or the patient suspected, it's uh, you're worried about CHF and Congestive heart failure and perfusion problems, which is also part of the tissue. And we'll talk about that in the next couple of lectures. So let's go through my A sleeps. My A sleeps, is it acute? It's acute. How does it start? Well, it has to be one of the other causes, uh, a clot or, you know, uh, that's cardiac tissue, atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, eating. Yeah, they're going to be nauseous. They might even vomit. Um, the assessment, we talked about the assessment, prescriptions are nitro, uh, trital, uh, integralin, and then uh, procedures are PCI, and uh, or cabbage, stenting, or balloon angioplasty. This is a hot topic, a very acute um, thing that you should uh, be very aware of especially for testing. It's a highly tested area because a lot of patients can get MIs. A lot of patients get chest pain. So what stands out? It's acute, um, no, no doubt about it. Uh, and knowing the protocol, knowing what you need to do um, and uh, why you're doing it. Well, that's about a quick overview on uh, myocardial infarction. My name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp. You can follow me on uh, on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Google, Etsy, Twitter, and nursingcamp.com. That's it for me. Now nurse on.